Hey, how you doing? It's Mr. Clifford with Key Economic Concepts in 60 Seconds. Now, this is a request video. I'm probably going to be going longer than 60 seconds. I wanted to explain something to you. This is comparative advantage. Comparative advantage, the, one of the first things you learn in economics, any basic economics course, you can learn about comparative advantage. Now, there's two types of questions we've got to look at. Output questions and input questions. Over here, please note, before we begin, pay attention, U.S., Canada, trains, planes. There you go, simple. Now, this four represents the number of trains that can be produced with a given certain amount of resources. They can either, U.S. can produce four trains or two planes. That's it, that's all. No third product, no other countries, just this. Now, is it a gross oversimplification? Yes. Welcome to economics. So, please join me. Let's go ahead and work these questions. First one up here, four trains, uh, two planes. First thing you do to solve these questions is you just put everything in like terms. I'm looking for per unit opportunity cost. So per unit opportunity cost. So I want to know for each one of these trains, how much did it cost in terms of planes given up for the United States? Well, if I produce four of these, I could have produced two of those. So each one of these must, must, must cost me one half of a plane. Now, if you have a hard time figuring that out, use this. Other goes over. Two over four gives you one half. Over here, one plane, again, the per unit opportunity cost of one plane, if I produce two planes, I give up four, so each one of these planes must have cost me two trains. Okay, if that makes sense, by yourself, please fill in right here and fill in right there. Stop the video. Now, I'll start the video. For this one, one train for Canada must cost, other goes over, one-fifth of a plane. And over here, one plane for Canada, other goes over and costs them five trains. Okay, so far so good. Now everything is in like terms, right? I know how much each train costs for the United States and each one train costs for Canada. Now I just compare the two, right? And I find out the comparative advantage, the one that has the lower opportunity cost. So in this situation, would you rather have the country that, produce, that gives up two trains, right, produce plans, or the one that gives up five trains? Yeah, I'd rather have the one that only gives up two. So the United States has a comparative advantage in the production of planes. That's the right answer. That's what your teacher is looking for. Now I'm telling you right now, mathematically, you're not going to have a comparative advantage in both. You're just not. But right here, logically, it tells you, right, I'd rather have the country that gives up only one-fifth of a plane produce it instead of the country that gives up one-half of a plane. So right here, they have a comparative advantage. There's your answer. Right? Canada should export and produce only trains. U.S. should export and produce only planes, and they should trade to each other, and they both benefit. That's the concept. Now, let's do it over again, except down here. Now, what you're looking down here is the same numbers, right? We started with four and five, two and one, four and five, two and one. Now, instead of being four trains and five trains for United States and Canada, this is number of hours to produce one car. That's it, number of hours to produce one car. This is the number of hours to produce one bike. Now, okay, the concept here is an input question. Right? If you're looking at number of workers or number of computers or acres of land, or in this case, hours, it must be an input question. That means you calculate it a different way. So pay attention. Right? In the United States, one car requires them four hours to produce one bike. It costs them two hours to make that. Right? It requires two hours. So each one of these cars, the question is, well, how many bikes do I give up? Well, if I spend four hours making one car, right, and I could have produced bikes at that same time that take it two hours to produce, each one of those cars must cost me two bikes. Now, another way to do it is just the input, other goes under. Four, two goes under four, that gives you two. Over here, same concept, right? One bike, well, two, four goes under, one half, this costs one half of a car. That totally makes sense, it totally makes sense. If I spend two hours making bikes, well I can only produce a half a car because I need four hours to produce a car. Bam! Now, that makes sense. Buy yourself, fill out what goes here and what goes here, and then figure out who has a comparative advantage. Go ahead and stop the video. Now, start the video. Over here, same concept. One car for Canada. Other goes under. Five uh, bikes. Over here, one bike. They have to give up one-fifth of a car. Now, this is the easy part. Everything's in like terms. Let's figure out what they should produce. Well, would you rather have a country that gives up two bikes or only gives up five bikes? Two, done. The United States has a comparative advantage in the production of cars. Over here, you rather have the country that only gives up one-fifth, so Canada has a comparative advantage in the production of bikes. That's it. That's a concept. I'll put input questions. Until next time.